coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take another look at keyboard shortcuts. Uh, there's so many more to come and so much more to do. So let's get started. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Thrott, and this week we're going to take a second look at keyboard shortcuts. We did an episode last week, covered a lot of the basics. There's a lot more. Um, some of these are uh, less obvious. Some of these are new. Um, there's been a, at least one that has gone away in Windows 11 24H2. Um, I have some of my favorites in here. I use a bunch of keyboard shorts, shortcuts, as you might know. I like to keep my hands on the keyboard. And then uh, several others that I actually don't use a lot, but are good to know uh, and are less obvious. So depending on where you're at, you might, uh, you know, you might find these to be useful. So let's get started here. Um, there's a couple of more that are fairly common. And this is, um, this is one, this might be the one I use possibly the most, um, which is Windows key plus E to bring up Explorer. Um, it's nice when the keyboard shortcuts kind of map to the term, right? So E is, you know, for Explorer, it's not always that way, but it's a good one. You've got this silly um, selection rectangle. We talked about this last week, but um, you know you can navigate around the interface with the keyboard. That's the point, I guess. It's an accessibility feature, but I think it looks a little weird, but that's what we got. So there's that. But of course, uh, File Explorer, which isn't just this window, it's also the desktop, but any of these uh, File Explorer windows plus the desktop is, is considered Explorer. Um, we have these uh, context menus, right? And so I'm just going to create a uh, I guess the text document. So I have something to click on here. If this thing is selected, you can right click it to get that context menu, right? Which we know, but if it's selected and this could be in the window too, it, that would probably be the more typical use case. Um, you can also type windows, I'm sorry, not windows, uh, shift plus F 10. And that brings up the keyboard, the same context menu, but now with these keyboard accelerators, which is kind of nice. So if you know, you're doing something very specific here, like rename, which is M, which is goofy, but that's fine. You could just type M and it would go right into rename. And so you could do that kind of quickly. I'm going to see, maybe you could, I couldn't, but uh, shift plus F10 plus M and go right to rename. Maybe that's the point of what you're doing today, right? So that's nice. We also know that Microsoft in simplifying and making it prettier <laughs> has taken away options that were in windows 10. So we can hold down the shift key when we right click in windows 11. And what we get is the old windows 10 style context menu with all of those choices. So that's actually very nice to know as well. Um, if I go into a view, I think this, yeah, we, this is some of the stuff we had done in a previous episode. Um, you know, you can tab into, a view you can tab around. I mean, I'm, I, I just tabbed into the that main view. Um, I think I mentioned this earlier, but in addition to the obvious stuff where you know you're using the arrow keys to move it around, um, you can also hit enter right to if I could hit the right key to um, just go into that thing right. Or if it's the or in this case, you know, um, let's find a better picture here. Um, just open that file like whatever it is in whatever your default app is. So that's. That's nice. Um, we talked about control T talked about control W obviously. Um, the second most common one for me, I bet is go into settings. And for that is, uh, windows key plus I, I don't know why I, <laughs> I know that S is taken by search. I also know that Q is taken by search and maybe S could be settings, but it's not, it's I. So windows key plus I go into settings. Um, when I set up a new computer, one of the first things I do is go into setting, uh, go into the settings app, run windows updates, especially, um, but I also, it's already selected, but I will select that, uh, find box up here in the corner and type in print because I take a lot of screenshots and they have changed how screenshots work now in windows 11. And so what I'm looking to do is what is enabled here. Well, which is disabled here. I should say I disabled this feature because by default, when you hit the print screen key on your keyboard, now it will run the snipping tool. Interestingly, a lot of modern keyboards, especially on laptops have a dedicated snipping tool key. In fact, not every one of them, but many of them also have a, a separate snipping tool and print screen key. So you could have these things do 
two different things. So uh, because of my needs, because I take a lot of screenshots, I, I need uh, the mouse cursor, which is one of those things that uh, snipping tool cannot do. I actually disable that, right? So I, I don't get in there, but you may want that. It's fine. So I'll leave it on for now because this is the normal thing, right? And so if I hit, if I can find it, hit that keyboard. Yeah, if I could find it. Um, there we go. So it brings up stimping tool, right? And you have the various options. Uh, we could do the window, do a full screen, whatever. It takes a screenshot, gives you this thing so that you could potentially edit it. We've talked about this fairly recently, I think. You know, grab the text, et cetera, et cetera. That's nice. If you want that, that's good. Interestingly, though, if you hit Alt plus print screen, um, it's not coming up here probably because we're recording the screen, but you actually get the Xbox game bar and that thing is captured to your videos folder. There's a captures folder in there and that's a way to do a window, right? Um, again, I use my own sort of thing for that, but it's there. Um, we still support Windows key plus print screen as well. This is the old way of not just copying the screen to the clipboard, but also saving it to a file. So if I type that, and nothing happened, but I assume I shouldn't. But if I go in here, go to the bottom. Yeah, so this is the thing. I just took that right there. So it takes a screenshot um, of the screen and saves it, right? Useful. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff. Now, I'm in my 50s. You would think I'm not really that into emoticons and emojis and stuff like that. And I'm kind of not. But, you know, I have kids and a wife. And it, as it turns out, I end up using these things a lot on my phone. Um, we were just talking about this on Windows Weekly recently. I don't know what the peanut emoticon means, but it's in there for whatever reason. And you can use emojis. I think, I believe they're called actually in Windows, at least, uh, inside of any documents that accept text. They're just like text. They can go in basically anything. Um, of course, this is not a mobile keyboard. We have a little button where you can press to get the emojis up. So we have a keyboard shortcut for that. And it's Windows key plus period. So you can bring that thing up. You know, heart is pretty typical, right? Um, is there a Mexico one? Nope, there's no Mexico one. Oh, I'm in the wrong thing. That's why. Um, yeah, search the emojis like, um, there must be a Mexico something. No, there's nothing. All right. Well, I don't use this a lot in Windows, so I've, I've already failed. But there are different, um, you know, emojis you can add, right? And then there they are. And then that thing is just kind of in there. I'm making, I'm zooming this in so you can see it. So it's just as big as the text. Um, basically anything that takes text uh, will work with that. So that's kind of cool. So one of the big changes over the past year has been the addition of Copilot, the app to Windows, and now the Copilot key on keyboards. I find this infuriating, frankly, because I hit this key by mistake all the time and I hate it. But when you hit the Copilot key, the Copilot app comes up. Of course it does. Remember, this used to be a pain. I still consider it a pain, a pain in the butt, but we can uh, get rid of it with Control W because it's just a web document or web app. Uh, so interestingly, Control W works fine with that. Um, in a future version of Windows, they're going to allow you to remap that key to different things. You could have it run a different app. I would like it to be mapped to nothing so it doesn't do anything, but we'll see if we get that. Um, Windows key plus C is the one that's missing now. So that used to run Cortana, which is gone. It ran Copilot back when Copilot was a pain, and you could use it as a toggle. So if you brought it up by mistake or just wanted to get rid of it again, you could hit uh, Windows key plus C uh, to get rid of it. Uh, but now it doesn't do anything. So Windows key plus C is sitting there empty. So maybe um, that is something that will change soon. Um, I mentioned, I think in the last episode, the, the weirdness with function keys and the function key role and how a lot of them are multimedia keys are things you use to control the volume or whatever other functions that your PC maker w might want to supply. So you need to know that uh, in some cases you have to, you know, hold down that function key to get to some of these shortcuts. Right. Um, and then there are some that are sort of, sort of going away. So if you look in here, there is this new interface that Microsoft calls an account manager for some reason, it doesn't really manage anything, but what's missing from here are the options that we used to, be going here for um, one of them is sign out uh, one of them is switch user so if there's another user signed in you would actually see that here and then there's a third option that's just not there it's called lock and um, you can still lock your computer and this is uh, a way to sign out without 
closing all your apps like your your user is still signed in but the screen is locked right um you can still do that and it's windows key plus l i'm not going to do that because i don't want to disrupt the recording it's weird to me it's not here anywhere um microsoft is just about to update this interface because people complain they're actually going to move sign out out to this pane instead of having it be under another step but as i record this it is that extra step the other one i use a lot is the run <laughs> the run command but i use it for i to date i've been using it for basically just one thing and that is to check the windows version and it's windows key plus r to bring it up um and then i type winver and then i get the windows version right and so here you can see our windows 11 24 h2 and then the build number and then once you've done that no it's not doing it <laughs> usually it saves it so usually the last thing you did is saved i must have something uh, set up a little differently on this computer but usually that's there so in my case i can usually hit windows key plus r enter because uh, winver is already filled out but lately because of some software development things i've been doing i've needed to switch between light and dark mode pretty regularly and so the way i would do that normally is windows key plus i to bring up settings personalization colors and then you can go to this thing and you can switch between light and dark mode which i won't do right now but as it turns out that every page in settings has a shortcut so if you're scripting which is something i'm kind of working on or you're writing a software application you can actually launch settings directly to a specific part of settings right a specific page so in here instead of uh winver now it'd be nice if this saved because this is a hard thing to type but ms dash settings colon colors hit enter does exactly that thing i just described right it goes right there so um, not on this computer but on the laptops i've been using where i'm working on visual studio or whatever i have that kind of ready to roll you know in the in the run dialog uh all the time because i just i have to switch back and forth you want to make sure um, that the apps you're working on look good in both um, color styles, right? Light or dark mode. So that's good. All right. So that's that's most of the keyboard shortcuts that I use on a fairly regular basis or a very regular basis, really. Um, but there's other ones that are good to know about, um, and they may be very valuable to you, even though I don't uh, necessarily use them myself. Um, one is called speech typing. Uh, Windows key plus H, I guess because it ends in H. I don't know. Um I haven't used it on this computer, so you have to kind of set it up for the first time, but um, you can, uh, this is basically when you are, you've selected some box where you can enter text. It could be Microsoft Word or Notepad, or it could be some box on a web page in Edge or some other web browser, um, Windows key plus H, and then you can dictate the thing and have it fill out that text. It will do uh, voice recognition, language recognition, and uh, you could do that stuff with your voice, right? Which is really nice, not just for accessibility reasons. It might be just... The, the kind of way that you want to do that. Um, task manager, this is the rare example where I turn into my wife or another normal person. I actually right click task manager. That's, that is the way I access this. I, I can't explain the hypocrisy of that, but um, that is how I do it. However, there are multiple keyboard shortcuts and multiple ways to access this thing. Um, the best one is actually control alt delete. I'm not gonna press it because you know, I don't wanna script the uh, recording just in case but it brings up a full screen interface with a couple of choices one of them is uh, task manager and the reason that's the best way is because that unattaches task manager from explorer so if you're having problems with the system something's corrupt something's not working right um, task manager will always run and run correctly when you do that uh, but the more typical way is control shift escape which is a little convoluted for your fingers but there you go and it brings up task manager in this default processes view right so that's neat that's fine but when you come into this app you're typically looking to do something right you might want to uh, you have an app that is not running correctly you want to kill it um, it's not doing it too much right now but these things tend to move around a lot so i've run into situations where i go to right click but by the time i actually click it the thing i've meant to click has moved to a different location and i've right clicked something else i've even hard stopped you know applications the wrong uh you know the wrong apps sometimes um doing that so this is kind of a fun it's not really documented but there's a fun shortcut here when you're looking at the uh, processes view especially and it's possible it works in some other views but i believe just here 
hold down the control key and it will stop animating and nothing will move, right? And now you can safely right click and do the thing you were going to do, which is typically end task. But however you might want to do that is fine. There's lots of other ways too, right? Yeah, start search, um, task man, right? Um, the right click thing that I did, etc. There's also the quick link menu I talked about, right? Uh, Windows key plus X. T will get you there. I, I I already I know that because in the two years of terribleness where I could right click on the taskbar, this was my this was my choice. So Windows key plus X T just in sequence, right, is another great way um, to access the task manager. Which unfortunately as a Windows user I need pretty often. <laughs> so good to know how to get into that correctly. And then the last one I want to talk about is for virtual desktop. So we, I mentioned earlier that task view you can bring up with um windows key plus tab and we do have this other we do have this other view um and i got to be careful here because as i click into this it occurs i don't know that i am recording <laughs> that so i want to be careful there but um multiple views uh each of it its own desktop right you can switch between them um if you want to do that with a keyboard instead of going into task view first it's Windows key plus control plus left or right arrow. And that will toggle you through however many virtual desktops you have. Again, I don't want to do that just in case. I don't want to screw anything up with the recording. But um, if you're using virtual desktops, you are almost by definition in power user territory. Um, you're going to want to know these keyboard shortcuts. This is actually really helpful. So um, I actually don't use uh, virtual desktops. I, I rarely use multiple monitors, uh, as it turns out, although I, in this recording situation, I am. Um, but if you are that person, if you like to use uh, virtual desktops, definitely learn um, the keyboard shortcuts to get in, how to get back and forth between them, and then how to go directly right back and forth between the various um, virtual desktops. So there you go. This, I mean, there's more, of course, there's always more, but that's kind of in my world that that's the, the, the body of keyboard shortcuts that I sort of think about on a fairly regular basis, unless I've missed an obvious one, which I suppose is possible, but that's most of it. So we've had all of the desktop stuff, the context menus, everything related to the task manager, documents, file explorer, browsers, um, virtual desktops, lock, et cetera, you know, the, quick link menu um every i mean windows was designed from the beginning to be used just with a keyboard and it's fascinating to me that here we are almost 40 years later and it still pretty much works complete with the keyboard if that's what you want i mean i'm not that crazy but i do like the shortcuts um just to become more efficient and uh i rely on them pretty heavily it's something to know about for sure so hopefully you found this useful We'll have a new video every week, so we'll be back uh, next Thursday. Every Thursday is the new video. Uh, Twit.tv slash H-O-W. Thank you for watching. Thank you especially to all of our Club Twit members. We love you. I'll see you next week.